one of my favorite verses in the Bible, Psalm 65 and 4. And it says this, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your temple, even of your holy temple, the goodness of your house, even of your holy temple. That's a, a verse that we should love and appreciate because it lets us know that God invites us. God invites us. And as God invites us, there's a, there's a, 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 there's a, a blessing in God inviting you. There's a blessing in God inviting you for fellowship. God inviting you to receive from him. From him to learn of him, to be consumed by him. But there is a choosing and a causing. So man has to, it has to be the will of God that he's chosen you. And he has to cause you to approach unto him. So he, he's... He invites you through many ways, by his spirit, through situations that's occurring in your life, by the sons of God ministering the word of God to you. That is an invitation to you. So if you find yourself drawn to things that show Jesus, things that minister the truth of Jesus, the love of Jesus, That's grace that has now been laid before you for you to accept and that grace is going to lead you to Jesus. And man is supposed to appreciate that unto an obedient life, unto, a, a, unto submitting to Jesus and letting Jesus transform his life. Now Jesus says something in the New Testament as we get to the, the other half of that verse when he says that he may dwell in your courts and be satisfied with the goodness of your house even of your holy temple. So while we don't have still a physical place, the, the, Jesus said... <clears throat> He said, a greater, a greater than the temple is here. They were impressed with the temple. And Jesus says, a greater than the temple is here. Now they didn't catch that. But Jesus was saying that he replaced that. Now he's not saying that he replaced the structure of church because Jesus didn't, Jesus is the head of the church. But Jesus actually, if we really look at the word of God for how, for what it says and how it, it ministers to us, we don't see the building of the church coming until the book of Acts. We see the, the, the actual the apostles, those that he, that Jesus anointed, ordained, and equipped to go out into the world. And he gives them the, the great commission at the end of Matthew. And he tells them to go forth, preaching, teaching, baptizing in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then he tells them, as we get into the book of Acts, he says, do not leave Jerusalem. Do not leave Jerusalem until you receive the Holy Ghost. And, you, and then you can go and bear witness of my name. So Jesus had to prepare the people. So when he chooses and causes us to approach him, that's not just for our, it, now, there's a measure of this that is for personal satisfaction, but it's also for development. It's also for training. It's also for the building and shaping of your mind and the conditioning of your heart for the work that you've been called to. It is a, it is a, a, a great, it is a, it is a responsibility that man 
has once he's been called, once he's been chosen and God has caused him to approach him. When as man gets these, these frequent invitations, he gets invited into the presence of God. He gets invited by the spirit of God. He has to then go forth with what he gets from God. And he is responsible to live that life in his personal life. And he's responsible to obey with what he's been given. So if God gives this person a, a abundance of power, of love, of peace, of grace, of glory, whatever this person, whatever God imparts, releases, transfers unto us, because man is a channel of blessing. Man is a conduit. The Christian is a conduit of power, a conduit of the blessings that come from God and are to be deposited, to be released unto the world. So as man is caused and chosen to, co to, to be with God for sanctification, cleansing, purifying of the heart, the transforming and the renewing of the, of the mind, he walks with Jesus and is being refreshed in the presence of God, repenting of his own sins so he can be in a, a condition of right standing with God and he can be made holy and righteous and live that life, a, honest, a man of honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom that begins to be the, the reputation that he lives as he lives and, and, and he's become one with Jesus and with the Father, then that is man living. That is the, the will of God at work in the person's life. But man can ignore the fact that God is wanting to bless him by choosing and causing him to approach him so that God can be good to him, so that man can dwell with him, and so that man can be overwhelmed and consumed by the love of God. And if, we think about, if you think about the book of Haggai, it's a book of, I believe it has maybe two chapters, a very quick turnaround as far as a preaching and then an actual carrying out of what was, what was ministered. Haggai has to go to the the, the 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 people at this point they are they are under the rule of King Darius and King Darius I believe was a uh, a Medo Persian king um, God has given them the liberty to rebuild to rebuild he wants them to rebuild the temple and they're not interested in doing that they are they are wanting to build their houses. They're wanting to just live life. And they're not really focused on what God's will is. They're not focused on what God's desires are. They're not focused on what God is telling them to do so that he can actually dwell among them. They just want, they're just happy that they're free to have their lives back, to have their livelihood back. And Haggai has to come to the leaders in this nation I believe it's Jerubabel, who's a descendant of King David. And um, I believe it's um, Joshua, the high priest. He has to come to these men and tell them that God wants a rebuilding. God wants to dwell amongst and dwell with his people. Well, he's not forgotten. And... At first, they don't do it. At first, they, they stall and they take their time. And then eventually, they, they begin to build. But my reasoning for referencing that is not, like again, it's not the, the, the referencing of the temple. It's, the, it's the, the fact that God desires to abide with those that he's chosen. He says, abide in me and I'll abide in you. Draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. So there's this, there's this, there's this constant thing that we see in the word of God where the spirit of God is, is trying to draw man because man is going to need power. 
man is going to need from the Spirit of God what he needs to fulfill the purposes of God. And man has to man has to consistently be with God in order to do that. So there's a causing and there's a choosing. There's a choosing. So when God elect, when God elects you, God anoints you, God appoints you, He chooses you, and He causes you to come to 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 Him. He chooses you for the work, and He causes you to do it. You know. It's it's a serious thing. Like the King like not King David at the time, but young David realized this amongst his brothers as Goliath is blaspheming God. David didn't use this moment to capitalize on the weakness of his brothers or the weakness of the people around him. Even King Saul was in the very midst of this. He just simply says, Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Because with Jesus being the cause and the effect, when he chooses you and he causes you, you get to see the effects. Man gets to see the effects of the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, and the, of the power of God. And that's what that's what the world, that's what the Lord wants to do. He wants to reveal himself through the obedience of man, through the righteousness of man, through the holiness that a man lives that's revealing God to the world so that's the effect of the choosing is in the causing the effect of that is Jesus being active Jesus being present Jesus being at work in his world and that's what the spirit of God is wanting to do with the faithful the call the chosen and the faithful so as we go forward and as we, we as we go forward and as we go higher in Jesus, may that be a focus that you and I desire. May our hearts truly want the the righteousness of God and may He fill us as He's caused us and He's chosen us. Because there's a blessing in the causing and the choosing. But we also have to understand that as we're being called, we're being chosen and we're being called to draw near to him there also takes effort on our part there also has to be a desire to go forward there has to be a desire to act on that cause and act on that chosen so may we be among those that obey in that way 